Hey everyone, this will be a quick video going through the basics of Python programming and the features that I found the most useful to learn. I would recommend learning Python to everyone, especially if you are a beginner. It is commonly used worldwide and the code is pretty simple, allowing you to quickly create powerful projects. Starting with Python definitely helped me learn other programming languages easier. First of all, I'll go over a few ways to start running Python code. To install it on your computer, first navigate to python.org, hover over downloads, and choose the platform that you are on. I will be demonstrating using Windows. You can choose any version, but for this guide, I will just use 3.10.6. Open the downloaded file and click Add to Path before installing. This allows you to use Python in command prompt. Click Install and wait for it to finish. Now that Python is installed, you can run any .py file. You can also edit them in Notepad, but having a code editor will help you write code easier. I personally use Visual Studio Code which can be downloaded at code.visualstudio.com. There are many other free code editors out there, and you can use whichever you prefer. Once again, we open the file that we downloaded and go through the installation process. We launch Visual Studio and click here to install the Python extension. Create a file and you can start writing Python code. The run button will be on the top right. Another way to run Python is through replit.com, which is a website that works in your browser. It is great for smaller pieces of code and it doesn't require you to install anything. I will be using it in this tutorial to make it simple. After making an account on the site, all you need to do is press create, choose Python, and name your file. The first topic I'll go over is how to display text. All we need to do is write a print statement. We type print and add quotation marks where you can type out the text you want. Press run and your text shows up. Now, what if we want to take text input instead? We can use an input statement with some text to prompt the user to type something. Now we were able to take the input, but we need to store it somewhere. We can assign it to a variable and let's call it user underscore age. Variables are like a storage system and calling its name will return the value that was assigned to it. Generally, the naming convention is putting an underscore between words. Variables can be assigned many types of values. Some common examples are storing 20, which would be an integer type, or 20.1, which is the decimal, so it would be a float type. A boolean is a type set that stores only true or false, and putting the stuff in quotation marks makes it a string. Strings also work with single quotes, like this. Using a print statement and a plus sign, we can display the value of our variable. Right now, our variable is a string type because input always returns to string values. This basically means it is text and not a number, so we can't add or subtract to it. To change this, we can use int around the whole input to cast, meaning convert, the variable into an integer type. If you wanted a decimal, you could use float. str would turn it back into a string. Let's turn this extra code into a comment by using a hashtag. Comments are code that is not run, and this allows you to stop some code from running when you're testing your program, or also to describe what your code actually does. Running the program again, we see that an error occurred this time. Reading errors is very important, since it tells you exactly what you got wrong. Here in line two, it says that we put an int where a string is supposed to be. This is because we can't use the plus sign to print an integer, making it really ineffective to print our text. A quick alternative would be using a comma instead, which automatically adds a space. Normally, however, we should use an f string, which is also called a formatted string. We use an f before the quotes and replace our variables in curly brackets. 
This works for all variable types and makes formatting a string really easy. What else can we do with strings? Let's start fresh with this text, ABC123. We can turn it into uppercase, lowercase, or even capitalized using these methods. If we want to remove text from the beginning or end of the string, we can use dot strip with the characters you want gone. As you can see, it removes the characters from both ends. This can be used without any parameters as well to remove blank spaces around the actual text. If we want to replace something in the middle, we can use dot replace. In this example, the text BC will be turned into DE. If we want, we can also find the length of a string using len. Let's move on to some mathematical operations. As you can see, addition is just a plus sign, subtraction is the minus sign, multiplication is the asterisk, and division is a slash. These are just like how we do it in real life. A percent sign, which might be new to you, is a modulus, and it gives the remainder of a division. A double slash is integer division, which truncates the result for you. We can do powers using double asterisks. With the variables, we can also use a shortcut operator, something like plus equals to. This adds the number to the variable. We can use this with any of the other previous operations. Sometimes we need to store many values in one variable, and we can use lists or dictionaries. To make a list, simply put elements inside brackets. We can store different types as well, such as int and string in the same list. To add an element, we can also use dot append, which adds it to the end. To add something in the middle, we can use dot insert with an index. The index for the first element of a list is always zero, so inserting something at position one would make it the second element in the list. To access a specific element, we can use brackets and enclose the index. Bracket zero would give us the first element, Bracket 1 would give us the second, and so on. Bracket negative 1 gives us the last element. Another data structure, which uses curly brackets, is the dictionary, where you assign values to keys. In this example, the value 10 is assigned to the key age. Keys can be numbers or even booleans, but they are most useful and most common as strings. The value can be any data type. You can add another entry or modify an existing one by using brackets, similarly to a list. Accessing a value is done the same way. Dictionaries are very useful because they allow you to essentially give values a label such as age or name. The last topic in this video will be if statements. It is a conditional statement, meaning it runs different parts of your code depending on if a condition is met. Let's do an example with the variable x equals 5. If x is less than or equal to 4, then we print less. Else, if x is equal to 5, then we print 5. Else, we print greater. Make sure to add proper indentations, since this tells Python which parts of the code to run if the condition is met. Let's take a look at how the if statement actually works. First, we tested if x is less than or equal to 4. This is false because x is 5. We move on to the next part. It tests else if, which is basically a second condition if the first one fails. And this one is true, so it will print 5. Let's pretend it was false. It would check the else statement, and it would print greater no matter what, since there is no other conditional to check. If you don't want anything printed at all if both the conditions fail, you can just remove the else statement and it'll do nothing. Notice that we used comparison operators to test the conditions, and in the second one we used two equal signs, because when you check if two things are equal, we have to use two of them. We only use one of them when we are assigning a value. Some other common conditionals we can use are checking if a phrase is in a string, and checking not equals to something by using not or an exclamation sign. We can also use some of the previous topics such as string.lower. 
This is very useful when taking user input since sometimes a user may type something in capital on accident and when we check it, we want it to take capitalized versions as well. So that was it for part one of Python basics. I tried to keep the video shorter since I know it's hard to sit through a long tutorial. In the description, I left a link to a replit document with all of the topics in case you want an easy place to access all of it. Even with just the topics in this video, you can already make many useful projects such as a calculator for your math homework. This is just a small portion of the possibilities of coding in Python and I will post part 2 soon which will include more advanced topics such as libraries and classes. Comment down below if there is anything specific that you would like to see. Make sure to subscribe to be notified when I release the second part and also leave a like if this video helped you.